Let me give you the four most overrated vitamin and mineral supplements that a lot of people take daily, but probably shouldn't. These are supplements that sound helpful on paper, but in practice either do nothing or can actually cause harm. So let's go through them one by one. Let's start with the biggest one, which is multivitamin supplements. These are probably the most popular supplement category of all time. Walk into any pharmacy or grocery store and you will see walls full of them. They promise to cover all your bases and fill in nutritional gaps. But here's the thing, most multivitamins don't actually fix your nutrient issues and in many cases they make them worse. The whole concept of multivitamins is flawed by the way. They try to squeeze all essential nutrients into a single pill or powder so all the vitamins and all the trace minerals that your body needs on paper and create a one-size-fits-all approach. But your body doesn't really work like that. You see, nutrients don't exist in isolation. They're part of a network. Many of them balance or compete with each other. And what many people don't realize is that the key to health usually isn't fixing a deficiency in one single nutrient, but fixing an imbalance between two or more of them. So, for example, most people have too much calcium compared to magnesium, or not enough zinc compared to copper. Vitamin A and vitamin D also regulate each other, and taking too much of one without the other is not a good idea. These nutrient imbalances create all kinds of symptoms, and if you take a multivitamin, you just increase your nutrient intake across the board, but do nothing to fix the nutrient ratios. To make things worse, many multivitamins are also full of cheap, low-quality forms of nutrients. You will often find cyanocobalamin as the B12 form, which is cheap but also completely synthetic compared to all the other available B12 forms. Or alpha-tocopherol as vitamin E, which is just one of eight forms that your body needs and too much of it can block the others. These products are also often overloaded with nutrients that are small and easy to cram into a capsule, like vitamin D, while skimping on bulkier but crucial ones like magnesium or potassium. That's because those take up too much space and cost more, not because your body needs less of them. So what's the alternative? Instead of trying to cover all of your needs with one product, focus on targeted supplementation. So get your nutrient levels tested and then fix what's actually out of balance. Use food as your base and supplements to fine tune things. Multivitamins just throw everything at the wall and hope something sticks, but that's not a good strategy. Next up is beta carotene, which is often labeled as vitamin A on supplement bottles, but that's misleading. Beta carotene is not vitamin A, it's a vitamin A precursor, meaning your body has to convert it into the usable form retinol before it can do anything useful. That conversion process sounds simple, but for many people, it doesn't work very well. You need a healthy thyroid, sufficient levels of the thyroid hormone T4, and good overall metabolism to actually make that conversion happen. So if your thyroid is underperforming, which is kind of common, you could be getting plenty of beta carotene, but still be functionally deficient in retinol. There's also a genetic factor here. So the enzyme that converts beta carotene into retinol is called BCMO1. And some people carry variations of this gene that make the enzyme far less efficient. Research shows that certain genetic variants here can reduce your ability to do this conversion by up to 70%. So for these people, beta-carotene supplements are practically useless. They will never make enough retinol from them. And this has real consequences, especially if you're a vegan or vegetarian. You see, vitamin A is crucial for eye health, immune function, skin membrane, hormone production, and liver health. A lot of people are walking around with dry skin, poor vision at night, and chronic infections, and they might be low in actual retinol even if they're eating a lot of carrots or taking beta-carotene supplements. So the bottom line is that if you need vitamin A, the best sources are animal foods like cod liver oil or egg yolks. And if you supplement, go with low-dose preformed vitamin A, like retinol palmitate or acetate. Again, this is especially important for vegans that don't get preformed vitamin A in their diet. Third, we have iron. Iron supplements are often seen as a safe bet, especially for anyone who's tired with low energy. But this is a classic example of good intentions gone wrong. Yes, iron is essential for carrying oxygen in the blood and producing energy. But most people, especially men, are not deficient in iron. In fact, they're overloaded with it. This is called iron overload. The reason this is happening is that in theory, your body should be really good at recycling iron. 
almost all of the iron that you need every day, which is around 25 milligram, is recycled from old red blood cells. So you only need to absorb around one milligram per day from food. That's it. And most people easily get that from their normal diet. So when you start taking extra iron, especially in supplemental form, it can build up in your tissues. The body really has no natural way of getting rid of this excess iron, except for blood loss, and that's where problems start. Excess iron will damage your mitochondria through oxidative stress, it will drive chronic inflammation, it will disrupt thyroid and liver function, and it can even cause neurological issues and fatigue. It's really one of those health things that flies under almost everyone's radar, and really no one talks about it. This is especially problematic for men who don't have periods and regular blood loss, and they tend to accumulate iron a lot faster as they age. And the problem with this is that many blood tests often don't catch this because the excess iron can be stuck in tissues and won't be floating around in your blood. So unless you have a confirmed iron deficiency and iron overload has been ruled out, please don't take iron supplements casually. Instead, support your iron recycling system. I will link related videos on this in the description. Really, the most important thing to understand is that there are way better ways to fix fatigue than just dumping more iron into your system that probably can't handle it. Last but not least, we need to talk about calcium supplements. These are still commonly recommended for bone health, especially for older adults or postmenopausal women. But calcium supplements, when they're taken alone, can actually cause more harm than good. The big concern here is tissue calcification. Your body wants calcium in your bones and teeth, but when your calcium metabolism is off, it can start showing up in the wrong places. So your arteries, kidneys, joints, and even soft tissue. This buildup is called calcification, and it is strongly linked to arterial plaque, stiff blood vessels, and a higher risk of heart attacks and strokes. Now, several studies have found that calcium supplements can potentially increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, especially in people who are already at risk. And the reason isn't necessarily too much calcium, but poor calcium handling. You see, calcium doesn't work alone. It needs cofactors to get absorbed, transported, and used correctly. These include magnesium to keep calcium out of cells, vitamin K2 to direct it into bones, vitamin D to help with absorption, and also other cofactors like vitamin A, boron, and even stomach acid. So when you take high-dose calcium supplements without anything else and without balancing the rest, you're basically throwing calcium into a broken system, just like in the case with iron. Instead of helping your bones, you then risk clogging your arteries. So what's the better move? First, you want to focus on digestion. So you need stomach acid to absorb calcium from food. Then you want to prioritize magnesium and vitamin K2. These are the real MVPs here because they directly influence calcium metabolism. And don't forget to load your bones with strength training or walking because exercise tells your body to park calcium in the right spots. Only when those factors are all in place and your calcium handling works, should you then take a calcium supplement if you need it. Because calcium bioavailability is kind of a rabbit hole, I will also link related videos in the description. Great, to wrap up this video, let me know in the comments if you've ever taken any of these and what your experience with them was. And if you want to learn how to build a smart, safe supplement stack, make sure to again check the description for my free resources and programs. They will help you with exact supplement doses and potential side effects. Again, everything will be linked in the description for you to click through.